Uh, my talk is, is the quick hack becoming agile uh, development. Um, and the things that I, I wanted to sort of cover in my talk, um, well, first of all, um, <clears throat> designing software uh, in the university environment and specifically designing software for the university environment and, and the issues that come up uh, with that. I guess the thing about um, universities, as, as, as we all know, that, know that um, they're sort of very traditional organisations, they love to do things like have committee meetings and subcommittee meetings and all that sort of thing. So it can get quite difficult when you are trying to sort of um, push in a solution quickly, a software-based solution quickly and, and all the sort of the hoops you, you have to uh, jump through. And also <clears throat> attempting to be kind of, um, you know, to, to sort of be agile while you, you develop in this kind of environment. Um, the second thing I want to touch on is, I guess, looking at um, what it is that mobile devices bring to the party, and especially Apple uh, devices, you know, the, the fact that um, uh, things like the iPad and the, the iPhone have fundamentally changed, really, the, the way in which we kind of assimilate and deal with information, and especially on the university campus, there's been such a huge uptake by, um, by staff and students with these kinds of devices, and we sort of need to take that into account um, when, you know, we're designing software. Um, and the third thing I wanted to kind of get into a bit was, I guess, the changing roles of university staff. So, you know, when I started at um, UNSW, actually, um, more than 10 years ago, uh, working there, um, the IT department was who you called when the, the blue screen of death arrived or something, or, or you know, you, <clears throat> you called him up and, and it was a different kind of relationship, whereas now um, there's much more of a sense um, and there's many more kind of people involved in, in creating uh, sort of uh, software solutions for universities um, uh, in really kind of meaningful ways and playing much more, uh, far more strategic roles uh, in, in their university. So I want to sort of talk about that uh, a bit as well. Um, a bit about me. Um, so uh, I'm actually not from a, any kind of super techie uh, background, although I'm, I'm gradually kind of being converted. Um, I'm actually uh, have, have had a, a series of um, administration roles in universities, uh, various uh, uh, New South Wales universities, um, doing things like uh, operations manager somewhere and uh, managing fees, revenue. Um, and uh, my current role is I'm the faculty manager of student administration uh, at Macquarie. And at Macquarie, we, we had a gigantic restructure, um, as all universities do, a couple of years ago, and it now has sort of these four mega faculties. Um, and so my role in, in, in my faculty, the Faculty of Science, is to kind of manage the student experience um, and, uh, and, and deliver systems and uh, processes that kind of uh, that make that uh, a good experience rather than a terrible one. Um, and I'm also doing my PhD at Macquarie. Uh, it's totally unrelated. It's in the Department of uh, Music and Media, and um, it's... Uh, hopefully going to be kind of an iPad app around uh, music analysis. Um, it sort of changes every week, as all PhDs do. Um, uh, and that's, <laughs> that's where I am right now in my PhD. I'm crying myself to sleep trying to learn core audio. Um, so it's been very cool, actually, trying to uh, meet people um, uh, at, at this conference uh, to get more information. Um, I guess what this talk is not really going to be about is... Um, Essentially, those big IT ticket items, um, you know, when you've got the giant Gmail rollout across your campus or someone has to put in the Wi-Fi or you're trying to integrate your AV systems, um, you know, the big CMS, the enterprise services bus, that kind of thing. I'm not really touching on uh, that kind of stuff because that's, it's usually that there's different strategies and methodologies used to sort of, so, sort of do that. What I'm really interested in um, in the university space is all that software which is kind of in the wouldn't it be cool if category. You know, when you're, you're sort of sitting around in your business unit in the, you know, in wherever you happen to work, and someone says, you know, we have to do this kind of same repetitive process five billion times a day. Wouldn't it be cool if we just had something which would actually be simple to make and then we could roll out? <laughs> and then someone goes away and, and, and just kind of builds it or, or whatever. So all that sort of stuff. And, and, um, and it's interesting from talking to people here and just various other... Uh, sort of conferences, I guess, and, and at the WWDC, a lot of people are really getting into this where it's like, you know, apps to uh, find out where car spaces are and, 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 and those things that are more about that kind of like there's a, 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 um, a local, the, like a problem that can have like kind of like a, a small bespoke solution kind of thing. So that's the kind of the space that I'm sort of uh, talking about. Um, 
So first of all, what do I mean by the quick hack? Now, unfortunately, I did realize after I sent him the name of my talk, the quick hack is kind of one of those things that is sometimes used positively. Um, so just to be very clear, I'm actually talking about something that's bad. Um, and so this is that bad, bad, bad software that you see everywhere, um, uh, especially in, in universities where it's very, very difficult to get um, fast, rapid, effective software. And so you have to do something kind of on the side, which is inevitably uh, hopelessly dodgy. Um, and when I was just kind of um, putting the talk together, I actually rang up uh, colleagues and friends from different universities and had a bit of a chat about, you know, what is the all-time bad, quick, hacky software that you, you've kind of had to deal with? Um, and there were three main things that people kind of um, <clears throat> shot back at me. First of all is that bad, quick, hacky software just feels like legacy from day one. Like, you, you put it in, you come back to work the next morning, it's like, what? You, you know, you've somehow got to start the process of turning it off, and then people who start working with you think that it's been there for a thousand years, but in actual fact, it just kind of started. Um, so that's the first thing that people sort of came back to me about, like, that's one of the things. The second thing about um, that bad, um, quick, hacky software is it's almost kind of pathologically local. Um, you know, it's, it's a software solution that really um, may questionably help one person in the organization, um, but that's kind of, kind of about it. And I did work at one university that, that I shall not name, um, and there was a piece of software there that was being used, which one person in the entire university used. It was like this kind of like more than 10 years old kind of uh, finance thing. It actually held all the really important finance information about the faculty. Had cool features like you could only really print out those old dot matrix printers, and so she had this thing set up on her desk and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it was like this kind of woeful uh, kind of software, which it, it really just didn't really help the organization. No one else could use it. Um, and also the fact that um, this person had been using it for so long that she actually kind of had absorbed the, the software bug. So she knew that um, if I press return 58 times, I would avoid crashing on this screen and stuff like that. So this sort of strange. Uh, sort of something. Um, and the other, bit, the other big thing about that, uh, you know, when I'm talking about this bad, quick solution uh, software, is it moves work, it doesn't get rid of it. And so I've also seen solutions where uh, there's been a big push to um, go online for students, and so the, <clears throat> the, the solution to this has been to create kind of the illusion of the online experience for students where they kind of do something online, which in turn prints something out somewhere else, which someone then has to take and data enter into another system kind of thing. And so like those kind of software solutions that are sort of problematic. And I found like just being in the university sector, uh, you know, across a range of different portfolios in the last 10 years, there, there's, there's so many of this, uh, these types of things around. Um, and it really is, it's partly to do with the fact that um, it's very, very difficult um, to, to, to sort of implement uh, solutions in the university space just because of the nature of the decision making process you, you kind of have to go through. Um, and of course, there's uh, classic uh, quick hack design patterns. And so just as the, um, you know, you've got your factory and your MVC and all that sort of stuff and good design patterns, there's also the bad ones. And the ones that I've tended to come across is, of course, the, the, um, the FileMaker, which is that one where, for some reason, you're using a version of FileMaker that's like 13 years old. Uh, and it's, it's a complete disaster, but it's been kind of customized to the space. So I've seen those in use like holding things like student visa information and student international fees in, uh, information, which has been um, not too good. Um, and then the, another quick hack I've seen a lot is the strange scripter, which is when you have a big piece of enterprise software in an attempt to deal with the data that comes out of it, you just start creating little scripts on the side, and, and they eventually become their own kind of weird system uh, in their own way. And I've certainly seen those things um, where they end up being the key way uh, to get uh, important financial information in an institution, so that's a bit scary. Um, and then, of course, the, the bad, uh, bespoke um, access database uh, uh, kind of solution. And I, I, one job I was at, um, we, we actually built this kind of custom access database thing, uh, and it just randomly printed paper. Like, it's, that was kind of what it became. It was just this kind of weird thing. It didn't really solve anything. Um, and, then, oh, and then the one I was talking about where, where basically no one uses it except for one person in the organization. And then the last two that seemed to come up a bit um, is when software 
is designed by someone you happen to know just because they could do it. Um, you know, like you, you're chatting to your neighbour, it turns out they develop on their side or their son does. Um, and so they kind of go, yeah, well, it's cool, we'll, we'll build something. And it's too hard to get your organisation on board to get a solution, so you just go with this. And I know of a number of existing solutions which are like this now. And it's one of those things, it doesn't matter if your neighbour is like Linus Torvald or something, it just doesn't matter. Like, it's always going to be bad because you're probably paying them in cake and beer or something anyway. So it's just sort of bad um, um, software. Um, so what do I mean by agile? And, and essentially I'm saying it's, it's kind of a good practice. So, yeah. um, and I guess I was trying to, I was having a, a big read around on different kind of things, but then there's also, and I don't have time to sort of get into, I guess, lots of different methodologies, and there's all sorts of different methodologies about how to be agile. But one kind of neat thing that comes up a lot is in you know, 2001, I think it was, they, there was a sort of key summit about Agile, which kind of captures the, the kinds of ideas uh, behind it. Um, and I guess kind of the, the sense that software... Um, oh, and these are the, the four things they, they kind of came up with. But the idea that we need to sort of look beyond what the actual business process is and the tools to use it to the individuals in the area and kind of uh, um, make software kind of react to what individuals kind of, kind of need. Um, uh, and also this big push to have working software uh, instead of documentation. So to be able to sort of, when you're developing software, um, the experience of consultation with end users is that you're sitting down with them and actually kind of working through user experiences that feel kind of real and stuff like that. Um, uh, and, and again, uh, this is kind of more of the same, I guess, um, just more about uh, collaborating with end users and, and key stakeholders, more about negotiation. Um, and then also responding to change. So as as the changes, oh sorry, that was me. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> I've got so many devices over here. One of them gone off. Um, uh, so, so the other idea is, um, yeah, yeah, sort of just being responsive to change. And that is one of the reasons why I'm not talking about big IT because it's very hard to structure projects, uh, sort of big IT projects in that way. But for the kind of wouldn't it be cool if software that I'm kind of talking about, it's like that. That's kind of a uh, it seems to be a neat way uh, and a neat mindset to, to, to kind of apply. So anyway, I was just going to take you through a, um, uh, s some sort of some software and, and, and what started out as, as a quick hack at Macquarie and actually became a really neat little piece of software. It's a very simple piece of software. Um, but just to put you in the picture, so uh, Macquarie, uh, when, I, when I sort of arrived at Macquarie three years ago, it was in the, <laughs> the wasteland of post restructure. That, um, and it was one of those restructures which all universities go through. It was, it was a very good restructure. Um, but um, where, you know, it, people physically were moved and redeployed and all that. So everyone was grumpy by the time that I got there. And I sort of regretted getting the job the moment I walked in the door for a couple of months. Um, but it was that kind of situation. And... Uh, basically, my, my role uh, at Macquarie was to sort of manage all the incoming uh, requests and information coming and manage the student centre uh, and all the course students' needs and stuff like that. Um, and what became really apparent was all the typical stuff that students asked. Um, that there was a lot of issues around students just providing us with, uh, you know, uh, questions and how we answer those questions. And so when you look at those basic processes that all universities have, like special consideration or when you no need to notify the university that your dog's exploded or something terrible has happened and therefore you, you need to sort of, um, you know, get more time for your assignment um, and, you know, grade appeals when you've got zero but you should have got a, a hundred and stuff like that or you want to chat about your grade or you want to increase the amount of subjects that you do um, or you want to you know, you've done a subject somewhere else, um, or you just want to do a subject without having doing any prerequisites and stuff like that. So this is the kind of the bread and butter stuff of processes that, you know, during a semester uh, or and even outside a semester, lots of coursework students always want to ask, you know, they want to throw in these questions. Um, and the thing that was really interesting when, um, so when I came into this role, um, was what really characterised all the movement around this information was complaints. And so, and just complaints from everywhere, it was just astounding. So basically the students were, were kind of at their wits end that they, they, they knew that if they wanted to hand us a document with, you know, they fill in a form and say whatever their issue was, they knew we'd lose it. Like, and they were handing it in, so they'd have to hand in like three in the hope that we, we wouldn't lose them. And then the staff in the office were saying that, um, you know, but then when we send it out to the departments and the, and the lecturers, they lose it. Uh, and then the lecturers would say, no, 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 internal mail loses it. 
And so everyone kind of was losing it and not losing it, and it wasn't anyone's fault as such, it was just the way there was just too much information and everyone trying to deal with too much information by adding more information into the mix. So it was a, a kind of a, a debacle. And so anyway, um, we had this kind of, and I say we because I, uh, the other thing that happened is I, I just, uh, a friend of mine also worked at Macquarie, uh, also does work at Macquarie, um, and uh, in the IT department in the faculty, um, who's like a, a web development kind of guy, um, and we were sort of chatting about this kind of issue, and so we had this kind of wouldn't it be cool moment, um, which was just like, let's take all our student requests online, simple, um, and sort of get rid of all the issues and everyone's happy. Um, uh, but as you guys all know, uh, in software, there's the moment after the cool moment when we try to sort of, sort of uh, figure out exactly uh, sort of how we do that and what we do and all that sort of stuff. Um, and essentially, we were talking about a piece of software that was very, very simple. All it was was um, just having all the information live in a URL that related to a student and be able to track it very easily, uh, and also having a basic workflow. Um, and what actually what I found really interesting is that it's very hard to find a very, very lightweight workflow tool of what, because that's the first thing we were doing is looking around and there seems to be lots of very, very gigantic workflow tools. But, um, and so what we actually wanted was something that was just really was very simple. Um, and, so, and so we had this chat, we, we decided we'd sort of design this, you know, we'd write this small piece of software, solve our problems. And I sort of said, well, I'll just pop off to the departments and have a chat and I'll be back in a jiffy and then we'll code it up and off we go. Um, but of course, then um, I had to start the requirements discussion. And it was one of those discussions where I could just feel the time draining out of my life. You know, like when you can just feel, and I'm sure you've all experienced that when, you, when you're sitting down with stakeholders and you're getting requirements for software and it's like suddenly the conversation has nothing to do with requirements. And, that's, and that was the interesting thing that started going on here. And so I'd have this discussion and someone would say like this little blue dot is a, a student, let's say, and I'd sit down with the first department and they go, well, the student hands it in and then they give it to Beverly or something and, and, and she does something. But then sometimes that might not happen and the student might instead hand it to, to Barbara uh, who might do something else with it. And then, uh, then the first person does something else with it again. And it became one of those things where I, and I'm sure you found this in requirements discussions where suddenly you're not talking about process at all. You're actually kind of talking about uh, a specific culture in the workplace and a specific set of sort of cultural practices and behaviours which are really entrenched and have nothing to do with the solution and stuff like that. Uh, and so this kind of went on and on and on and, and trying to figure out what the process was and people were turning up everywhere and then they'd sort of tell me about, oh, sometimes the parents will turn up and then there's this guy that doesn't work here anymore but still has a desk and um, I was like, it's all that kind of discussion um, and so on and so forth. Um, and so it ended up that was kind of the process. And so that was after department number one and then I went to the next department and they basically gave me kind of a commentary on why this was wrong but they gave me another you know, different form of spaghetti and stuff like that. Um, and so the weird thing about this was, was the actual software, or the actual requirements when we sort of stepped back and looked at what we were trying to do was so incredibly simple um, and they're essentially um, just having a basic workflow where a student would have a question and then a series of sort of linear steps would ensue and then a student would be happy and everyone's cool. Um, and it sort of led us to this kind of issue um, and, and we, the discussion kind of became in terms of, of getting the requirements is why uh, if that's the actual requirement, I mean, the actual thing that needs to happen in the software is the discussion we're having so, so different. Um, and what we found um, was and, and this is one of those things with, um, I guess, as you go through the requirements gathering process with, with stakeholders, um, it kind of had a lot to do with the, the way in which information was moving around in the faculty and the way in which people were perceiving information. And I, and I think this is one of those really critical things that when you're working with um, software and software development, um, like kind of realising that um, the currency of information or the commodity of information is this thing that has the capacity to totally traumatise people, um, depending on how it's kind of used and stuff. Uh, and I did a kind of a look around at different kind of articles and stuff, and what tends to emerge is that like we're constantly inundated by all kinds of information. Um, we're apparently addicted to getting more uh, information, we just can't sort of get enough of it. Um, we're totally overloaded um, by all this information. Um, and there's kind of all sorts of studies on this. 
um, sort of goes on and on and on. And apparently it's, it's actually driving us crazy, especially in the workplace. Um, and there's, there's also, yeah, information rage is like a new sort of thing they're doing a lot of studies on. And it's really got to do with the fact that um, people are totally traumatised by being overloaded with information. And that's kind of what the discussion that I was having in these departments saying, look, we just want to implement this software. And often it happens at universities where you're talking about implementing something and people are so overloaded with all the stuff that's going into them in, in an unstructured way that all they really do is just say no. And then they'll say, this is the... Or they'll start telling you kind of anecdotes about how everything's crap. But what you actually need to do is, is find the, the requirements. Um, uh, and, and, and also the, the massive amount of cost um, that, that this, this is. Um, and there's, so there's, there's all sorts of information um, that, that's what I was tracking down about this kind of phenomenon. Um, but what it comes down to, we realise, is that, and this is a critical thing for the requirements process, uh, or just gathering requirements for software, is you kind of need to um, think about uh, the state that your end users are actually in. So I guess no matter how good your software, and this is what we're finding, that no matter how good what you're going to roll out is, and it doesn't matter how simple or complex it is, um, you know, looking at actually what is the culture of the organisation and how they're going to sort of um, uh, be able to deal with this uh, kind of information, all that sort of thing. Um, and so, um, so we ended up with this list of requirements um, uh, that basically tried to... Uh, and this is just kind of a, a summary list, but um, that basically tried to take into account, um, you know, what was going on with the culture of the organisation and also the, you know, the actual processes that we wanted to have and all that sort of stuff. And the first two were pretty simple. So all we were trying to do was build a piece of software that had one place that students could go and then had no duplication. So that's, you know, no-brainer. That's, that's kind of cool. Um, we also wanted to have a requirement like we also found, because as soon as we sat down with groups of people in the university, and as soon as you go through the committee process to develop software, it just it just gets really ugly really fast. And I found, um, I went to a learning and teaching committee meeting in the university to say, we were thinking of doing this, and it was like there was blood on the floor, man, by the time they'd finished with me. Um, and so what we, we did was we kind of always, when we were developing this software and, uh, and consulting about the software, um, we actually only dealt with sort of one or two people at a time. And so we didn't get that sort of mob mentality kind of thing. Um, and we also, because the actual process underlying the solution that we wanted to put in place was so simple, it was just a linear workflow, we, only, we consulted around the user experience, so around screenshots of what the user experience was because the underlying logic was so kind of simple. Um, and that really gave people a sense that they had control over the process, but it meant they weren't kind of really messing with the logic kind of thing, uh, and we were getting really good feedback about what people couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, you know, cope with, I guess, in terms of the system. Um, and we also had some, we decided we wanted to make a system where there was no training because people um, were refusing to turn up training even for the enterprise systems in the university anyway, and they didn't pay attention, so we wanted to make it, uh, that wasn't going to be an issue. Um, we wanted it to have this software not even feel like a system, you know what I mean? So it's like it just feels like almost like another web page or something that you happen to be surfing on. There's no sense that you're going into some uh, system or launching something or anything like that. Um, and we also, and this is kind of a handy thing uh, that works well in university environments, that um, if you manage to get um, sort of one process to be approved and to, uh, you know, like say if you've got something like... Um, uh, you know, taking a process like notification of disruption for students and put it online is if you make all your other process kind of look and feel the same and then no one really notices that you're actually kind of uh, putting them all through the pipeline and you get kind of a lot of volume uh, going that way. Um, uh, and we also wanted to have software, again, taking into account the culture of the organisation um, to have to be able to create something which had a 30-second petition participation rate so people could... Um, click on a link from an email, go in, make a decision, and then they're done. Um, and we also uh, didn't want to change the existing culture, so we weren't interested in creating change. The university had just been through a huge amount of change. Uh, this is one of those things, too, with, with developing software. Um, if the, if the organisation has already gone through a huge amount of, of change management, you probably don't want to roll out something that feels like more change, and so we, we sort of designed it in this way. And I'll show you a couple of screenshots in a sec. Um, and we also wanted to capture, there was all this kind of noise around this uh, system, so what we were finding is when it was paper-based, um, 
uh, academic staff were writing kind of all this stuff that essentially uh, was about pastoral care of students. So they'd, they'd, uh, they'd uh, approve some sort of request for a student or whatever and then write kind of around the margins all over the paper about what the student should do. Um, and then, and so what we did was we kind of created a, uh, a place where people could just type that in and that was essentially just customise the emails going back to the students. Um, and, and I'll show you that in a sec as, as well. Um, and also the idea, we were trying to create something that basically um, tr was, was, a, was a very, very basic piece of software but also allowed us to get like a diagnostics on what exactly was going on with the dynamics of, of the organisation. So where was information moving? Where was it stopping? Um, why were people so grumpy about you know, the way things were and stuff? So we wanted to kind of get really um, good diagnostics. Um, oh, and, and then the other thing we, we constantly did because people really didn't want any, uh, like you know, the idea that more software was going to come in, um, we kind of created the off button illusion where we'd sort of, we just constantly said, oh yeah, we'll just turn it off if you're not happy, we'll turn it off. Um, and we sort of built in like a print function uh, to this which kind of made it look like the existing hard copy process kind of stuff, which is kind of a uh, neat thing uh, to do when you're, when you're taking, a lot of people don't like the idea of, especially in universities, of things going online. Um, and so just by building in like a sort of print functionality, it seemed to, um, to work. Um, oh yes, I mean, that's what we called it. So um, it occurred to me too that you've got to name software early and if you name it, it that's how it kind of you know, gets currency around the place. Um, so just uh, briefly sort of showing you what we kind of came up with. So instead of having all those forms, and it's pretty bad resolution I know, but uh, instead of having all those forms, we now have um, like just a basic um, you know, web page where students just click in and, and um, you know, to make their requests. And we've just um, created this with very basic like sort of PHP, SQL type uh, framework and then I was doing the Java stuff on, on the front. Um, and so students now instead of filling in pa paper forms they have kind of like dynamic forms so depending on what they choose along the way the form will kind of change and pick up kind of a rich profile of, uh, of information. Um, and then we, we also had a staff search engine which we kind of built so we allowed staff to kind of search on any and all parameters and like if they didn't press any parameters still everything would come up so it wasn't the kind of thing where you had to really learn anything, you could just kind of play around. Um, and um, you could search for your unit or your department or, or whatever. Um, so that was kind of cool. Um, and, and we also, because we didn't really want any training, we just made a big yellow box that said make a decision uh, and so people would just get this kind of email uh, with a link and they just uh, and that, that seemed to work pretty well uh, as well. Um, uh, and of course everything just came to people as email notifications, so the way we set it up was we, we kind of had the unit code, like say COMP100 or COMP125 or whatever, uh, as, the, as kind of the primary key and so um, students would make a request against that and uh, an academic staff member would be put against that uh, kind of as well, um, so they'd be notified. Um, Oh yeah, and, and we also allowed the departments which we dealt with to just tell us who was responsible for what. So we didn't really care who did what uh, in, in the department, we just wanted to know where the stuff was going. So we gave functionality to, to all our departments to say, okay, you know, I'm the person that looks after so and so. And so it was actually strange, it actually took work away from, from you know, my business unit because we kind of but gave control over to, um, uh, to other people. So that's kind of a really kind of whirlwind tour of um, uh, this very, very basic piece of software that essentially started life um, as kind of a quick hacky idea and then kind of accidentally became uh, agile principally because um, uh, we, we, you know, I guess the way we wanted to sort of have working software straight away and, and we wanted to work with stakeholders in a particular way. Um, and also because we ended up coming up with something that was uh, when it was implemented, it actually didn't really function like a quick hack in, 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 the, in the sense of what I was talking about earlier. And so the interesting incomes, uh, outcomes about this software was, firstly, it was, it was ridiculously efficient in terms of efficiency. Um, so ridiculously successful, sorry, uh, in terms of efficiency. And mostly, not because the software was fantastic, it was just really basic, but because suddenly there was only one copy of everything. So there's only one unique copy kind of thing. Um, and so all that extra work was actually being created by all the other kind of paperwork. Um, the other thing that happened is it became a university project. So it was picked up, um, so we did it kind of on the side and there was no funding or anything like that. 
uh, and then the university has kind of now come to the party, basically taken all our screenshots and, and everything, and they're going to roll out a university-wide version. Um, I think the first one's coming out in October, which doesn't mean it's not half as cool as, as what we had, but it's coming. Um, uh, we had other faculty buy-in, so you know this idea that you know the quick hack is kind of very local and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, we uh, the Faculty of Arts straight away at Macquarie said, oh, this is really cool, can you have it? And it actually was something which we could just hand over and they just turned it on um, because it was so simple to use and kind of, um, you know, just kind of catered for, you know, whatever their kind of work culture was. Um, and we had um, uh, another faculty wanted to use it, but they were going through some other restructures and we actually held back because we just thought, oh, we don't want um, the software to be sullied. Um, uh, <laughs> you know how it is. Um, so, um, but this strange thing that basically we started with this small idea and then suddenly we've, we've got potential, we've got half the university using it in terms of um, learning and teaching processes. Uh, we've got another quarter of the university wanting to kind of get on board. Um, uh, and also the other interesting thing, with this, this is just another outcome, we had a massive increase in requests because students suddenly had a, had a way to contact us which they felt wasn't. Uh, ridiculous, and they also felt they might get uh, a response. And so we had, I think, a 400% increase uh, in, in requests because it was so easy to fill in the online form. But to give you a sense of how ridiculous things used to be, we still, taking that into account, we had about an 80% decrease in workload um, just because of, of the nature of what was going on. Um, uh, oh yeah, we want a sustainability award because we got rid of the paper. That was kind of cool. Um, uh, and this is where it's, it gets strange about, I think, for developers um, working in these kinds of spaces and responding to the wouldn't it be cool if software thing. Um, one thing, it wasn't, in, uh, was, it wasn't in my job role, certainly to, to create software. The guy that I did it with wasn't in his role um, to create this. So it was this kind of strange thing where, um, you know, we didn't really own any of the, the intellectual property of that, you know, whatever that's worth, I guess. Um, we didn't... Um, like we, we couldn't really decide um, to hand it over because I, I was, you know, just from speaking to people at other universities who thought, oh, that'd be really cool, can we have it? And it's like, well, no, because I don't really own it. And so this issue that, you know, when you're developing software and no matter how basic it is, um, that, you know, how you retain control of it is kind of one of those weird things. And the other thing is also there was no sense of success metrics attached to this project. So even though we got rid of a massive amount of work, um, and, and it was very successful on the ground in terms of, um, you, know, you know, like fixing processes and making things a lot smoother. There was nothing I could really point to to say, yeah, I'm, you know, this is the situation, here's the situation now, so, um, you, you know, how, can you remunerate me or something like that? You know, it's like it's, it's totally different. Universities just don't really work that way. Um, uh, oh, and then the other thing we had, which was kind of good, um, we found that in terms of the actual faculty, um, there was far more trust building with systems and people were kind of into that. And we actually found as well is because the software kind of gave a lot more control over information, people would tell us they actually had more job satisfaction, which is another interesting thing about, um, you know, the idea to take disparate information moving everywhere and if you can find ways to, to move it effectively, it actually does kind of um, add value to people's uh, jobs and stuff like that. So overall, we were kind of left with this thing about... You, you know, when you, de when you develop software in the university space, is it a good career move? Because it's sort of, it, it, was lots, it was lots and lots of fun, so it was worth doing it for that. But in terms of like, what it brings to your job and stuff like that, it's also one of those things that when you, when you develop this kind of software, a lot of people, especially in senior management, don't like it. And so that kind of, you know. Um, but in terms at least of the, you know, of agile type of thing, and I know I've kind of narrowly defined and vaguely defined agile here, um, but in terms of um, you know some of the, the hallmarks of the that kind of thing, um, certainly we managed to create some software that was, you know, it like it wasn't local. Um, you know, half the university at least was was using it and still uses it. Um, it's it's it doesn't feel like it's legacy um, to people. Like it feels like it's really kind of um, you know, um, required for their kind of uh, day life. Doesn't feel like some weird old technology that doesn't make sense. Um, and a massive amount of work disappears. So that's cool. Um, but the other problem is, I guess, um, in terms of the quick hack, um, it kind of depends how you define all this. And certainly. 
Um, the issue that we found about it all was we did realise we, we, we really annoyed the CIO of the university because it kind of depends on how all this is defined and I kind of, I do understand I guess where this guy is coming from is it's just when you, no matter how good the systems you create uh, at that local level, um, it's just from the point of view of the CIO it's another thing that the university has to turn off in their quest um, to fix all the IT systems um, in, the, in the university. Um, and, in, and certainly in Macquarie, and I know there's a, a trend for this in universities, we're moving towards more and more big uh, enterprise systems. Um, we're buying lots of software and attempting to configure it in, in cool ways. Um, and there's a big, big strategy at the moment, and, and which is really centered around sort of big IT solutions. And so this stuff kind of like, you know, just kind of annoys people. Um, well, annoys certain types of people. Um, and so certainly if I was trying to go for a job uh, in my university, in the IT department, um, um, I don't think I'd be kind of on the list. So it's that kind of uh, odd, odd thing. Um, but another, one really interesting outcome was this, um, was that it led to kind of a, a new project. And so we also realised that um, like a basic simple workflow tool in a university just to move information around has huge potential for other parts of the university. And so we were sort of asked by, you know, the faculty general managers and stuff, like not only to look at learning and teaching processes, which we've kind of done, um, but to also look at other parts of the university and the other parts of the facu uh, other faculty uh, processes and portfolios, like HR and finance, because it actually turns out that most of the internal processes that universities go through are incredibly similar. You know, that idea that you basically have this kind of ball of information which needs a decision and you hand it on to, to a, a small group of people and then there's an outcome. And the fact, you know, we just didn't have any kind of um, uh, tool that allowed, allowed us to do that. So that was kind of cool. So it's turned into this new possible project. Um, the other thing, and, and just to sort of change tracks here, uh, I, I guess, um, to make is, and, and thinking about that our first project's kind of wrapped up at this stage, um, and thinking about, you know, where do we go from here and all that sort of stuff. The other really interesting thing happened, um, while we were coding um, the, um, you know, while we were just building this small piece of software for the university, a really interesting thing happened and, and suddenly iPads um, came out, I think that was in 2010 or something. Um, and the other thing we noticed that is suddenly, um, you know, this type of technology is making information exciting. And it's this really weird thing that's happened on our campus and it seems to be happening on a lot of campuses as well, where we've gone from trying to um, uh, create systems to kind of deal with the fact that people are traumatised by information um, to people being really excited about a device um, whose sole purpose is to really present and transmit information in a kind of a new way that people uh, that, that really like and can cope with. And so that's also really changed the dynamic of, um, uh, of the way that we're approaching uh, software development now. Um, and also the way in which we're sort of approaching this kind of, uh, you know, if uh, a new project. Um, and just regarding that, I was just going to uh, briefly segue, that's spelled right, um, uh, into actually, and, and then just is talking about how the change that's kind of occurred in the last few years around um, what we expect of, of technology and especially how the iPad drives that. Um, I was actually, when I was at WWDC, I was lining up for one of the sessions and I was chatting to this dude, Larry, um, who was, uh, I think he's from Charleston or, or Charlestown or something in, in America, and he was telling me this story about uh, his wife's school, and Larry's wife is a uh, primary school teacher, and uh, she still had to, like when she wrote uh, school reports and that kind of stuff, she'd actually still have to do, it wasn't quite carbon copy, but it was like three copies of this and that, and, and to actually the process of her having to do her work was so ridiculous um, and took so much time that Larry, uh, being a developer said, oh, that's cool, I'll just build you something. And so he built her something that she could use and she kind of uses on the iPad and it basically took all her work away. Um, and, uh, you, and then what happened was um, he went to the school and said, hey, you can use this for free because, you know, it seems to take all your, you know, it seems to be a good thing. But of course the school, like a university, sort of said, no, no, we can't do that. We need to have a huge uh, uh, a group of committee meetings and there's all sorts of decisions and there's no way we can do that. Um, so what ended up happening is all Larry's wife's colleagues now pay him $10 a month um, to use this piece of software that he developed that the school hasn't endorsed. 
And, and so we, we're just having a, a sort of a chat about this and it, and it kind of goes to the heart of the fact that um, there's such a different expectation around IT solutions that's starting to emerge now. The first is that people expect software to be really easy to use and actually kind of enjoyable to use. Um, they expect it to be absolutely bespoke um, to their needs and, and the app store tells us that you know, more and more stuff is actually like that. And this really interesting one that kind of Larry and I were sort of chatting about um, is that as an individual now, if you're unhappy with your IT solution, you can kind of outsource it, you, you know what I mean? I was telling a, a friend about this at an Australian university when I came back and they were telling me that um, they, they tried to ask their IT department to configure a computer in a certain way and the IT department said, no, no, we don't do that. And they said, fine, we don't want your services anymore. And now they just, they have actually just sort of broke away. They seceded from their IT department and they do everything on their own. And we're actually kind of in an environment where you can actually do that. You can just kind of Google a solution almost and, and find something that you can just grab off the shelf. And so moving towards this kind of app store model of software where you can kind of browse for solutions uh, rather than relying on your organizations. And I guess it just throws the gauntlet down uh, to organizations to actually need to come up with cool stuff. Um, and of course, that growing mentality that people have that isn't there an app for that, like that sort of question that underpins um, uh, seeking solutions around information and stuff like that. Um, and so, so I guess what, um, what all this is kind of heading to is that it's not only the fact that, you know, when you're in a university space and you're trying to design software um, in a way that doesn't upset the culture, um, the other thing you, you can now take into account is that people um, really actually like IT in this kind of cool, you know what I mean, like the iPad is kind of driving this thing that people are excited about technology, whereas even, you know, three years ago, um, the, the university staff I was dealing with, like uh, university administrative staff and professional staff, um, were traumatized by technology and, and the thought of, of having a new piece of technology just kind of freaked them out. They kind of hide under the desk. Um, and so what we're finding is, like at the moment in, in my sort of development um, and requirements adventures at, at Macquarie, people still think the desktop suck. Like if you sit down with someone um, and you're going through um, whatever, you're showing them stuff, they, there's that kind of that moroseness that descends as people sort of sit in their offices at their desktops and stuff like that. But um, people think that iPads are totally awesome. And this is this weird thing um, that's totally sort of changed the, the game a lot. And even think, like I find it really weird that people actually think tables are cool. Like if you open Excel and start talking about how cool Excel is, you just, you just get hit. But if you show someone on your iPhone like just zipping around on tables and having it an anime and stuff, they just think it's cool. Um, and so it means that there's suddenly a whole new way to think about you know, how you develop and, and deploy kind of solutions uh, in the university to staff. Um, and also, the other cool thing about um, the, the iPad, the rise of the iPad um, and, uh, and the iPhone and all that sort of stuff, is people are really kind of widget trained. So um, you can kind of leverage off that. You don't have to think so much in terms of like no training solutions. You can actually think about how can I use the kind of the cool uh, tools that are, you know, that are in this space and, and do cool stuff. Um, and then as well, um, you know, computing is a tactile experience. And so what, so right at the moment, I'm sort of just um, talking to staff about, you know, possible software solutions that we might kind of, kind of give them and, um, and going through kind of mock-ups um, on the iPad with them. And the fact that it's a tactile experience means it's a totally different dynamic that underpins the conversation. So it's, it's, it's very different. Um, and so now uh, the game has really changed towards from information overload to the possibility of having a, a kind of a native app experience uh, and the possibility that information is kind of encapsulated. But that's the, 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 the really cool thing, especially um, like I find in, uh, you know, through the Macquarie experience, is to actually have a tool, um, one of whose driving sort of um, roles is to encapsulate information is a really powerful thing in terms of how to deliver uh, staff processes and, and, and how to deliver sort of organisational needs in a university. Um, um, so essentially, I'll just go. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is also, I was, I was going to say, the other, in terms of it being a bad career move, which it actually, it kind of essentially was, you know, developing software in a university just kind of annoys people, um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, where you want your career to go, I guess, and all that sort of stuff. 
Um, so what we're doing now, as well as kind of taking a more kind of iPad-y approach um, and, and kind of thinking more along those lines, is we're, we're actually structuring our project like an academic project. And so because we, there's no way the university will ever come to the party in terms of rewarding you for um, tangibly removing work and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, in terms of meeting uh, key targets and all that sort of stuff. But where, where universities really excel is um, where you can do things as part of uh, an academic project. Uh, and that kind of brings in like a cool way that you can handle your IP. So in, in what we were doing previously at Macquarie, we basically kind of created this cool stuff which we found there was all sorts of interesting demand for, um, but we couldn't hang on to it. Whereas now, um, we're sort of undertaking uh, more and more development, but we're kind of like leveraging off uh, conferences and creating papers and stuff like that. So it's kind of like just that, in terms of if you're a, uh, a developer in your organization and you, you kind of do that sort of the wouldn't it be cool if software, um, it's a very good idea to kind of uh, locate it uh, in, in kind of an academic space. Um, um, and then you can kind of leverage off it, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, yes, and this, doesn't annoy the boss, which is good, and that's what we're finding because we're more uh, sort of creating solutions now, which are kind of um, uh, just they feel like they're in, an academic space is a bit different from the organisational um, business process space, um, which is kind of more volatile. Um, and I think, hang on, I'll just, oh yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, so just to sum up, um, and I guess in terms of what we're doing at, at Macquarie at the moment, we've just started this new kind of project. We're, we're taking a different uh, approach. Um, we're taking a different approach to how we, we manage our, uh, you know, our IP and how we manage, uh, manage it. And we're also taking a different approach to, to the requirements. Um, and we're also trying to add uh, kind of a cool um, app layer, but we haven't actually built that yet. Um, and what we're really thinking, thinking now in terms of um, software, what's interesting we found is that the, the discussion around software that, that, that we're having at Macquarie is we're no longer thinking in terms of like, oh, uh, you, you know, we just want to create something that doesn't annoy people. Suddenly the discussion is more about we want to create something that's really cool um, and something that no matter how lame the business process is, um, uh, you can actually create uh, software that actually make it cool. So for instance, one thing we're doing at the moment, we're trying to create like a um, uh, sort of a, uh, an, an app layer on our, on our software that basically looks at, so, so you can visualise where all the information and requests come and go from the faculty and you kind of zoom in and out like it's a map and see where the hotspots and stuff like that are. So it gives people a lot more control over how, of where information is going and stuff like that. Um, and so, uh, to sum up, sorry, I've just spoken really, really quickly. So, anyway, um, the first thing, I, I guess the first takeaway message is the quick fix doesn't need to be a quick hack because of, um, you know, the cool things that technology now uh, kind of um, lets us do, uh, especially kind of in terms of, the, you know, that sort of local space. Um, uh, the other thing is it's really important to have an appropriate requirements discussion. So you've got to really take into account um, I guess the psychology of the organisation, um, the underlying kind of culture uh, of what's going on and like don't design software that's appropriate to astronauts uh, and those kinds of concerns in the space shuttle if you, you're dealing with you know a different type of uh, group of people or, or whatever you know so that's kind of critical. Um, uh, and also make the environment work for you, that's been our sort of big learning thing is that rather than just create software um, that, that fills a problem, uh, that sort of takes care of a problem, what you really want to do is kind of say, well, I, can't, I also want to leverage off that uh, in terms of making it a different type of project where I can, you know, I can, I can generate some journal articles and I can, I can at least hold on to the IP enough to hand it over to someone else as, a, as part of their project. Um, and yeah, leverage off coolness. Like, um, there's so much cool stuff that's happening, um, especially, in the, like, especially in the iPad space. And that's been a real game changer, uh, for, uh, like we're finding at Macquarie, just that thing about, you know, my workspace and, and that, you know, this device allows me to rethink my workspace kind of thing. Um, and we're really trying to leverage off that because you get a lot, a lot of mileage out of it. Um, and then, I think this is my final point, um, just really realising that um, software developers and people in IT are, are sort of more and more becoming the core people in the organisation. Because, like, whatever the business is, IT is the core business. Like it really, uh, it amazes me really that 
when you think about something like what the iPad is, it's essentially just this device, it's like someone's found a way to deliver information in a far, far more effective way. Like it doesn't actually kind of create uh, new, new content or anything like that. Um, and it sort of really hammers home the idea that um, the way in which you can make information move in your organisation really underpins um, how successful and how effective uh, it'll be. And then, oh, then I'm, I'm done. So, thank you. Is there any...